Hello everyone, this is Vicious, and welcome back to more Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. So in our last episode, we made our way to Zoro's Domain. We found a bottle in Lake Hylia, which contained a letter by Princess Ruto herself, saying that she's trapped inside Lord Jabu Jabu's belly. We showed the note to her father that allows access into Lord Jabu Jabu's belly. And like I said before, if you didn't have the fish now, go grab a fish, because you're going to need to enter this dungeon. When you drop the fish on the ground, it will trigger a cutscene in which Lord Jabu Jabu himself will suck you in. And now we have a dungeon. Also, the child dungeons always have this weird inside part of the dungeon. When you start playing adult dungeons, they just tell you forest temple, or water temple, or fire temple. But for now, we get all the inside stuff, and seriously, I should get a medal for going inside all these like monsters and weird things. It's a little traumatizing as a kid if you think about it. Like, yeah, I, what'd you do? I went inside a uh, giant sea monster. Yeah, how about that? Actually, it's their god. So, so these jellyfish you really can't do much about, actually. Uh, you can use your fairy slingshot to bounce them away. Other than that, though, you really can't kill them. The item here will allow us to kill them because it's going to be very important to kill the boss of this dungeon. So anyway, we're going to be dealing with one of the most annoying factors of this dungeon. That is Princess Ruto herself. Now, for the people who actually played this game, you will completely understand why no one likes this dungeon. You have to carry her all over the place. Now, thankfully, it's not through the entire dungeon. And if you don't know what you're doing, it can be kind of difficult to figure out what you're supposed to do with her. So, um, if you have any difficulties, you know, look at a guide, or you can watch this video even, because I think I did this part pretty well, except for maybe, like, the fighting the mini-boss and the final boss, because for some reason, I'm not used to using a GameCube controller on this game, I'm used to the N64 controller, so, uh, I'm still trying to get used to everything, so my C-targeting is not perfect, and, um, for some reason during the mini-boss, I forget to hit the attack button, like, I have no idea what happened. I was going for a jump attack, and for some reason my character decided to roll. That was awful. So we'll get to that part when we get there. So anyway, I talked to Princess Ruto about three times here. But the first two times she's going to tell you to go away. The third time she will tell you, well, you have the honor of carrying me now. But there's a bonus to that, actually. You can use her as a weapon. If there's an enemy in front of you, throw her. Just throw at the enemy and watch it die. See? She just kind of sat in the bubble and killed it. So, one more thing I want to point out, too. Um, before we got to this dungeon, on my way back from the Kokiri Forest, I picked up a heart piece, which was located right outside Zoro's Domain, which I showed you. Basically, all you need to do is get a chicken and glide yourself over there. That's about it. So, go over here, throw her up there, and then hit that switch. We're actually going to kill this uh, Skulltula over here, actually. Because that is yet another gold Skulltula token for us. Like I said, I'm trying to get all the ones that I can get. If I don't get all 100, don't blame me. Because getting all 100 is the most pointless side quest of this game. Getting most of them, yes, is very important. Getting all of them is useless. And I would love to know whose decision it was to make the final prize that. Which I'm pretty sure if you played this game before, or if you've seen guides or videos or anything like that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't, then, well, you're in for a treat. A horrible, horrible treat. Anyway, we're gonna hit the switch one more time, and we're gonna swim up to this platform. You actually gotta be quick here, because the water doesn't stay raised for that long. Anyway, come over here, and grab Princess Ruto again. Just throw her around. Hey, you can even throw her around. There's only two times where she actually gets angry, angry for you dropping her. Or leaving her behind. So you can put it down right here. I'm gonna use this bag. So yeah, for those things, you're gonna use your fairy slingshot. It's like little tonsil holes or whatever. I don't know. There's switches. Hitting those switches will activate these doors. This part can be kind of annoying. I'm just gonna juke around this thing, because I can. Basically, what I'm doing is waiting for the platform to drop. Now, what you could do here is just drop her and whip out your Deku shield and just deflect her shot. I'm just going to wait. Because once you get on this platform, he just goes away. Because you're getting too close to him. <clears throat> so anyway, rising up to this platform is going to be the um, 
starting point of the dungeon, pretty much. Well, it's the part after the starting part. We're making our way back up here because we're actually going to use uh, Princess Ruta here for a few switches coming up. So just be careful walking through this room, though. There's a lot of holes everywhere. Yeah, you can fall down those holes and you'll have to make your way all the way back up here again. So it's kind of annoying. Also, that giant jellyfish, just ignore it. Now these guys. I hate these guys. Now, I personally don't know what they're called, but they are some of the most annoying enemies you'll ever come across in this place because you're just trying to run by and they pop up and hit you. Like that, see? But just walking into them will kill them or throwing Princess Ruto will also kill them as well. So this is not the switch you're supposed to hit. There's a switch that when you jump on it, Navi will stop you and tell you you need two people to uh, activate the switch. So we have another person on top of us, in a sense. And that is Princess Ruto. So Princess Ruto's extra weight is going to help us push down the switch. No, I'm not calling her fat. I'm just saying she's a little heavy. And it helps us with the dungeon. That's all. There we go. So if you leave her outside there, she will actually go back to the point where you first met her. And you'll have to pick her up again. So just bring her in here and you should be okay. So these uh, little... Stingrays, I guess you can call them. Just use your uh, fairy slingshot here and take care of them quite easily. If you want to, you can take them out with the sword. Um, you have to be really quick about it, though, or away from the dive down. But other than that, just use your fairy slingshot. Also, to get them to pop up, just walk towards them, and you should be okay. So I'm going to freeform this uh, shot here. Getting really good with my fairy slingshot aiming. Should probably try that mini game. I don't know, I'm really iffy about that. Usually when I do those mini games, I get like really tense uh, and stuff and I screw up and it's annoying. It's really annoying. All that pain and mem uh, misery came back in Majora's Mask. And I can't wait to play the 3DS version. Oh joy! So anyway, being this room will make a chest appear and that will contain the boomerang. Yes, one of the most important items for this dungeon. It will take care of the jellyfish and also these uh, weird slime things we're going to be coming across in a second here. There, equip that. Going to make sure we have our ocarina on us just at all times. I don't know why I always have the thing on me. We really don't need the bottle for anything. So anyway, you see those big slimy things there as you just saw? We're going to have to take care of them now. So we're going to come all the way back over here. Back to the switch that we had to push somebody down here. Yeah, come over here and you can drop Princess Ruto right here. She won't go away. Basically, when you come out, she will just be angry at you. But in any other room that you leave her behind, she will go back to that starting point and you'll have to pick her up again. So these things are really easy. Basically, just uh, Z target and move in. It'll come down and throw you boomerang. It takes about four hits to kill. So four hits. And this will make, I believe this is the map of the dungeon. Do you really need this? No, because if you know what you're doing in this dungeon, you have no purpose for a map. But if you're, if this is your first time, go ahead and pick it up. So we already know what the map does, so I'm just going to skip that text. And now we'll take care of that weird slime thing that was blocking the door on the other side here on the left. See, now she's all mad, like, oh, how inconsiderate. You left me behind like that? Like, take responsibility. You're a man. I'm sorry. Also, yeah, the, this uh, floor here does make you move. I thought I was, like, seeing things when I was playing this as a kid. I was like, oh, the floor doesn't make you move. Oh, no, it does. You move around. So, as Navi said there, take care of the uh, red slimy things. We'll make um, that thing that was blocking the door pretty much go away. So, this room right here, there is a little tactic I like to use here. Now, of course, you can use your boomerang, you can slash him with a sword, or you can just run into him. Seriously, running into these things are probably the fastest way to get rid of them, because you are timed here. Is this room important? No. It just gives you the compass. But if you're going for it, um, yeah, it, it's there. So yeah, you can use your boomerang, or you can just run into him. I actually used to just run into him as a kid, because they're annoying. The, the bubbles are some of the most annoying enemies to deal with in this place, just because... Uh, floating all over the place, when you attack it, you're most likely going to miss because it's going to bounce off somewhere and you have to time it really well. So as a kid, I just kind of ran into everything. Face first. It's kind of how I play most games these days. I just kind of go face first in everything. I don't know why. 
as a kid, I was more like reticulant in my way of playing a game, but now I'm all like run face first and everything. I don't know why. This is weird. So yeah, these things are annoying. They will make you drop Princess Ruto every time you run into them. And they just kind of get in your way. So yeah, we still have to take care of that weird slimy thing. So we're coming back over this way with the, uh, the double person switch. And this pathway will open up. And we have to take care of yet another weird slime thing. So like I said, four shots and this thing will go down easily. Um, there is another one we're going to face, which is going to have a few extra enemies inside, but for now, we just have these normal ones. So yeah, if you feel like the thing's chasing you down, um, you can either backflip out of the way, or just, uh, dodge to the left or right, and you should be okay. Other than that, really simple stuff, moving along nicely here. So, taking care of that weird slime thing, is actually going to open up the pathway in the middle. Just gonna run by those guys. I just don't like dealing with them. You can take care of them with the boomerang as well. So coming in here, we have one more weird dangly slime thing. But this time we actually have jellyfish here as well. So like I said, use your boomerang. Takes care of the jellyfish quite easily. What I'm gonna do here is actually wait for those two jellyfish to start moving their way over this way. Because, yeah, we have more room to move around now. You still have to take care of them, like actually kill them to finish up the room and unlock the door. But, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to move them out of the way so I have some space to work here. Yeah, some boomerang throws. And you should be okay. I love the boomerang. It just kind of sucks that you get it so late as a child. Because, like I said before, this is the final dungeon that you play as a child before you move on to the adult phase. And once you're an adult, the boomerang is useless. Kind of sucks, but... Eh. What are you going to do? You do get a whole dungeon dedicated to using it. Yeah, this is the bad part here. Um, for some reason, I was trying to pick her up and for some reason just wouldn't grab. I guess you'd be standing way too close to her. Or if you get hit for some reason, the grab button just doesn't appear. So it was kind of annoying. And then you just get hit by a bunch of things. So taking care of that weird slime dangly thing, whatever you want to call it, opens up this pathway. I also want to drop Princess Ruta here real quick because we have yet another Gold Skull Chiller grab. I believe that actually puts us at 21. So now that we have 21 Gold Skull Chillas, we can actually head back to the Skull Chilla house to get to reap a second reward. So I believe there's another one in there. I'm just going to ignore it for now. Because like I said, I'm not getting every single one, just the ones that are in my way. So there it is. We found it. Hey. That is the Spiritual Stone of Water. A sore on sapphire. See, that was easy. No bosses, no nothing. Just had to carry this like girl around, and you know everything's good. So basically, it was something that her mother gave her, which has a whole sentimental value to it. And when she was feeding Lord Jabu Jabu, Lord Jabu Jabu just kind of swallowed her whole. Uh, basically, this is a doing of Ganondorf. He's trying to corrupt the races, like mo more precious things, to force them to give him the stones. So anyway, that happens. The platform rises, and in its wake is a mini boss. We get our very first mini boss of the game. I have no idea what this thing is called. I completely forget the top of my head. But this thing is kind of annoying. Basically, the goal is to stun it and then. When its back is turned, also I have no idea why I was using the fairy slingshot. But yeah, when its back is turned, you're gonna throw your boomerang and try to stun it, and then you'll see like a big shining green hit me light. In that case, uh, we'll run over there and just smack it with your sword. You can either go for a quick jab, or you can do a lunging slash. I would recommend the lunging slash just because it did some more damage out. This is me just trying to get this stupid thing to turn around. So every time like, you hit it or uh, it runs into you, it will turn its direction. So that's the best way I think to actually hit it. Now for some reason I was going here, you'll see real quick. I was trying to remember how to attack for some reason, I completely forgot. And I accidentally rolled into this stupid mini boss. I'm a little disappointed there. What are you, you going to do, really? So like, anyway, this boss is this mini boss is kind of easy, just 
Watch out for the platform rotating because those are spikes and they will hurt you. The only reason this is taking me so long is because I'm being really, really dumb here for some reason. Basically, your goal is to hit its backside. It's a stun it while its back is turned, and then you can run up and hit that big green light. Look at a little slash there. And he's a little more ticked off. You want to wait for it to turn around. As you tell there, see, so just completely turned around. And one more jab. And we should get at least one more lunge attack in, and that should finish him off. I'm trying to get the boomerang to hit him a little too early, but, uh... That's my problem there. Anyway, there we go. Big light, and that is the final blow to the first mini-boss of the game. Of course, there'll be plenty more later on. So that will take care of that part, and then we're going to ride the platform, and then we're going to end the video there, guys. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you on the next part. Later!